Um, it's useful because it allows you to do what I'm about to do now, which I'm going to copy here, go back to Sublime, paste it in, no matches. So I'm just going to say, okay, that's good. Copy this, paste it in there again, no matches, hitting fine just in case, and so on. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that. And you can do this as I'm, as I'm doing it here, if you so like, or I believe that most of these will actually see. So this actually found um, an issue, but it's not really an issue. If we, if we see what it's actually saying, it's saying half of the following types that are spaces, non-breaking uh, and zero width, been used properly, right? And they have been used properly because this, you wouldn't want to have, you know, figure and then break and then 1.2 start on the next line. So this has been used properly. You can leave this alone. You don't need to change it back into another space or anything else. Um, so some of these searches will bring up what we call false positives um, or things that are you know, correct and they're just there because the search is wide enough to catch those. Um, so if you ever see like, hey, I got one match, look and see, okay, this is supposed to be how it is. Um, and so you can leave that alone. So we'll copy that. No matches. The way that I see that it's no matches is here on the bottom left, you'll see that it'll say as, it says unable to find. All right. Just while I was just doing this, I'll, I'll mention that just to give some context to what we're doing, uh, you know, please let us know if you have questions about why we're running mm -hmm. certain searches. Um, some of them seem, seem obvious, you know, like, hey, I found double spaces, I should clean it up, that's, a, that's an error. But there's also things that we're doing that are going to affect the way the hub is going to put these files together later on. So for example, you know, why is it good to have your page IDs? It doesn't seem to do anything now, but those IDs are going to become uh, anchors later on so that your index is automatically linked. You know, why do we make sure that NREF and, and NUM match up, not just because it's uh, correct, but because if they do match up, the hub is gonna be able to automatically link your endnotes um, in text to the actual place where they are in the note. So some of this is preparing not just the reading experience, in transitioning from print to electronic, but it is preparing the file to be run in a further conversion. Um, so we're ensuring that the conversion is going to run properly by running a lot of these checks in addition to cleaning up any errors that might be still in the file. Mm -hmm. Correct. And you'll see that this search, which is the one that searches for URLs, again, caught things, but they're not wrong. All that this search does is that it's a, okay, I'll answer that question for Kathy in a moment. Um, all that it does is searches for the URLs to make sure that they are uh, wrapped in URL tags. And these tags are a little different than just your standard URL tags, uh, only because they, are, they have already been linked in InDesign and we preserved, um, uh, well, there you go. Uh, and they have already been linked in InDesign and so that link carries over in our conversion, right? And so to Kathy's question, if there's a difference between page IDs and page locators, page IDs are where the pages actually start. Page locators um, just indicate that, for example, a figure was on this page or a sidebar was on this page. Um, so the ones that you need to worry about are the IDs. Um, the reason that there's a difference between ID and locator is that if you can have two IDs of the same uh, with the same ID. In other words, um, XML doesn't allow that. So you can't have page ID equals P9 and then for a figure have page ID equals P9. So page locators uh, get around that and allow you to keep um, like figures, sidebars, things that are often not part of the same uh, text, uh, text flow um, where they need to be in the um, SAM file. All right. I don't know if Tim wants to add anything to that or if I've said something horribly wrong. <laughs> I hope not, right? Okay. And so, again, these searches are wide enough to catch things, um, you know, that are often, you know, just pointing you to say, hey, look at this just in case. So, and here we'll, we're just catching all the URLs, right? And so, we're just making sure that they are tagged with URL tags so that these can be links in uh, the digital files. You'll see that it even catches the metadata ones up here. Um, and this was actually one of the searches that was also present in the composition QC. Right? And so you'll see, you go through and you're like, okay, this has URL, this has URL, this has URL, 
and that has URL. And then we're back to where we just were. And so we'll go back to our QC list and we're almost done with it. All right, I'll take that. No, didn't find anything here. And if any URLs are run together, because that may happen sometimes, again, if things are in the workflow, a lot of these searches, um, you'll run them quickly, like we just ran all of these in you know, three minutes because they won't find anything. Um, again, as Tim said, these checklists are created just in case you're coming in at the workflow at this point rather than all the way back from composition uh, or type setting and so on and so forth. Now, here's where you will need um, scribe, um, the scribe tools for Sublime, the ones that come up here under Scribe Inc. If you look at the last check is making sure that the file is valid. You could upload this to the hub and the hub will tell you if it's valid or not. Um, if it's not valid, it'll give you um, a warning, right? But you can also do that in Sublime so that way you're not having to like upload, download, upload, download, and so on and so forth. If you go to Scribe Inc, if you have that installed and you go down to where it says build, you'll see that there are two forms of validation, the well-formedness check, which if you remember what I said at the beginning, in HTML, XML, and the like, you need to, everything that has a beginning, every tag that has a beginning needs to have an end. So this is what this checks for. So we are gonna go ahead and click on that. And you'll see you'll get this finished in one second or two seconds or however many. Uh, as long as you get the finished um, and no other errors, um, then you're good to go. That means um, things are well formed. But we actually, uh, suggest you always do DTD validation uh, because something can be well formed and not DTD valid. Uh, because uh, just as a little primer, um, a DTD is just a set of rules of what can exist under what tags and um, in what order that they can exist. And if something breaks those rules, then uh, you need to go back and fix that. So we're going to go ahead and run that here. We're going to go to scribe, build, and DTD validation. And we'll see that our file is valid, right, as we expected it to be. But um, just as a little thing before we um, break to introduce um, others and then break for lunch um, as we're coming up on that hour, I just want to show you um, what the error will look like um, just really quickly. So I, I deleted um, the ending tag, and here I'm going to do a well-formedness check, and it'll tell you, it'll give you the line number, and let me actually word wrap this so that way it's easier to see, right? And it'll tell you what's going on. Opening and ending tag mismatch. This has EXNL, and then you end up um, the last ending tag that it's actually finding is Sam, right? So um, you can then go ahead and fix that. So just undo that error and run your validation again. And there you go. So if you ever come up with an error, it'll give you the line number, go to the line number, fix the issue, run the validation again, and you can do that until you get no more errors. Um, so at this point, I'm going to pass it on to Karen because I believe we